Okay. Anyway, thank you very much, uh, uh, folks, for uh, joining me today for this uh, live webinar. We're going to cover uh, natural uh, remedies, which you can do uh, at home without herbal treatments or any other type of uh, treatment. So we're going to cover um, three areas, really. One, uh, food, uh, inflammatory uh, type, anti-inflammatory type of diet to reduce pain and address uh, different types of inflammation. And the two, we're going to talk about different types of inflammation and pain, which is quite important because you really have to understand your type of pain before you can treat your pain. This is a very important point because there are different types of pain, which we're going to cover. And three, then we'll talk about some uh, spices, some home remedies, some oils, some, and even some products that you could buy uh, to help uh, to improve your inflammation and pain. We have to say, though, that a lot of these treatments aren't necessarily uh, reaching the, the root causes of your, your pain and your inflammation. Your pain and inflammation uh, cause could be due to toxicity in your joint, toxicity in your muscles, uh, uh, nutritional deficiencies. It could be many causes, uh, of course, uh, structural problems with your uh, spinal system, uh, um, pinched nerves. It could be many causes. So in a webinar, we can't understand your cause, but it's best to understand the cause uh, before you come up with a treatment. But even if we don't know the cause, at least we can assess um, uh, the type of pain. So let's talk about these three types of pain real quick, and then we'll start the anti-inflammatory diet. The three types of pain that we need to look for is uh, we could call first a hot pain, inflammatory pain that feels warm, feels warm to the touch. If you have joint pain or somebody comes to me with arthritic pain, the first thing I want to do is touch it and feel, feel the heat on the joints, feel the heat uh, on, on the wrist where the pain is, or feel the heat along the spinal column, feel the heat on the lower back or the upper shoulders. And you can generally tell by just feeling the body temperature if there's this type of warm inflammatory heat. So that's the first type of uh, inflammation, where there's clearly heat involved with it. Not all pain has heat, and if I've it, we call this type of a pitta uh, type of uh, arthritis or pitta type of pain where it accompanies the heat. And second type is a, a more of a cold and dry, and that's when it hurts when it moves, <laughs> and the bones are cracking, <laughs> and the neck's cracking and hurting. Doesn't feel warm and hot, and actually uh, feels better when you're in a uh, hot. Uh, bath or you have a hot pad on it so it feels better so it's very important to distinguish between this type of hot inflammatory pain and this kind of dry dry uh, 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 arthritic or a uh, joint pain so uh, very different because for the hot pain we want to do cooling things like go in the ocean go in cold salt water and cool down the body temperature and when we have this hot pain where it's I mean, cold pain where it, it's hurting when it moves. This is usually thin, dry, light people. Um, vata, uh, prom predominant body types, as we would say in Ayurveda. And it hurts when it moves and you don't feel the uh, uh, heat. Even they can have cold hands and feet and they have joint pain. So they're going to benefit from warmer treatments where it involves uh, hot baths, hot pads, um, uh, uh, cayenne, uh, eucalyptus, warming herbs are going to benefit, but it could make the other type of pain worse. So it's very important to classify your, your pain. And then other, there's other classifications, of course. There's many causes, but the other type is type of swelling pain, swelling pain, where the wrists are swell, there's edema, there's swelling in the ankle, swelling in the knees, and it hurts, and it actually feels better when you move, when you exercise. So uh, if you're overweight or you're a cough dominant person, you have a lymphatic congestion, you have excess weight, fatty liver, and now you start to have pain, you know, in your knees, your ankles, and maybe the, the joints, and you have the swelling. And when you go out walking, and when you go out exercising, it feels better. Uh, so it, the movement helps it feel better, and bringing down the swelling and uh, helps improve the condition. So those would be the three main categories, uh, kind of hot inflammatory pain, which we want to use more cooling, substances like aloe vera uh, and uh, coriander and cool mint and things that are cooling to bring down the temperature aloe vera probably being the best for that type of hot pain where you feel pain where it's clearly you're a warm person already and now you've got this 
painful hot pain, taking aloe vera internally, uh, putting aloe vera externally on it, taking cool salt baths, getting in a bath that's not hot, putting in a whole cup of salt, not Epsom salt, but sea salt, that will, will help to reduce the, this type of hot inflammatory pain. And of course, we've got to talk about the diet too. The diet's different. And then the cold pain, where it's, it hurts when you move, well, don't move. And it's going to feel best when you put oil on it, warm oils. You could put sesame oil and put a few drops of eucalyptus oil, juniper berry oil. There's many uh, kind of warming oils that you can mix with some olive oil. Don't put coconut oil on your body if you, ha if you have that dry pain, dry cold pain, because that's just going to bring the temperature down and make it colder. You want to put a warming oil. And, it, and even you could put some mustard oil, get olive oil plus some mustard oil, little eucalyptus oil or juniper berry oil in with it, and then massage it on the, these areas. So because this type of pain is due to the cold and dry qualities that you have. Um, so putting on hot, oily a substance like it's a warm oil, like sesame oil with a little mustard oil, is going to counter that dry uh, 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 and a cold type of joint pain. It's going to soothe it. Uh, so completely opposite. And if you are a uh, have that swelling type of pain, then you want to take diuretics, parsley tea, cut down on salt, cut down on even drinking liquids, exercise, and bring down that uh, uh, swelling. And getting a nice vigorous massage uh, to get circulation going, getting the lymph going. Uh, so this is a, a good example there of uh, three types of of uh, uh, pain and so you really have to kind of classify it even when we look at a headache you know we can have a three types of uh, head pain you can have a sharp pains on the front which and then you can have a kind of a heavy pain that, that just kind of seems feels like a rock so even there you want to understand if it's a sharp pain or a dull pain this will determine the type of a treatment you know in, in herbal remedies but for uh, Headaches, there's many uh, good cures. Um, you put your feet in uh, hot, uh, a bowl of hot water. It could be hot salt water if your joints have a, a pain. And then put a cold pack on your forehead or even the back of your neck. Uh, or just get a cold towel, put it over your head. And then put your feet in hot water and see this brings the, the pressure down. This is very good for uh, headaches um, and uh, nerve pain. Well, we're on just subject of nerve pain. You know, uh, the, one of the best herbs is willow bark, you know, just white willow bark there. And that's why I have this nerve and headache tea. And its main ingredient is the willow bark, the same substance they made uh, aspirin from. There's also fever few and uh, chamomile and skullcap because these, these are uh, also mild sedatives and uh, they uh, help, help with pain as well. And like I said earlier, a great anti-inflammatory is aloe vera, particularly for that hot pain. Salt baths are fantastic for really all three types of pain. And these are, um, if you have a tooth pain, you have a pain on your teeth, um, then really the fastest relief is charcoal. You get the charcoal tablets and you put it straight on your, on your tooth, and this takes care of the pain uh, quite quickly uh, and soothes it. And if you have a, a, a lower back pain or a neck pain, then these are Chinese uh, uh, pads. It's like a tiger balm, um, and, but they're in a pad form. You take the pad out and you stick the pad right on there, they, and, and it heats right up and it takes care of the pain. These are great for a lower back pain. It's a Chinese uh, product. They're called a, a plastic um, for, and it, for uh, bruises and Anagesic. Anagesic is, you know, pain reducing. So there's many, many pain reducing herbs. Reducing pain is not difficult. I mean, the willow bark is very good for this type of headache. And even these type of sedatives like valerium are work very well in uh, reducing pain. You could take these at night and it will sedate you and also help with pain. So there's many sedatives and anagesics. In Ayurveda, they use mostly gugulu, which is a type of resonance, black. And it's a very good sedative. In Western medicine, the best one really to use is uh, uh, a devil's claw. This is probably the best uh, sedative and I have arthritic uh, uh, tea 
and it's using uh, devil's claw. It's the main ingredient. I mean, so if all you had was devil's claw, you could always put in some St. John's wort, make it more anti-inflammatory, put in some lemon balm, put in some meadow sweet. You could add some fennel to it, maybe even a little ginger, and this would be very nice. Now, of course, there's wonderful spices that are anti-inflammatory too. Uh, turmeric and uh, coriander being two of the best. You don't always have to put pepper in it. It's not necessary. If you're a hot person and you're sweating or, and you have this type of hot pain and you get acid reflux easy, you don't want to put a black pepper in with your turmeric. You just have the uh, the turmeric. And turmeric, can't, don't, don't take it in capsules. It's not correct. It needs to be cooked in your food every day, cooked in the food, or you can warm it up in a milk. You know, if you're a pitta person, you have a lot of acidity, a lot of heat, heat you put a, two teaspoons of turmeric, a little bit of fennel, and you cook it in the milk and then you, you, you drink it. It's very, the fennel will be cooling, the turmeric could be anti-inflammatory. If you're a bigger person, more overweight, you're more congested, nasal blockage, then, you know, we wouldn't want to do the milk. You just do the, uh, you could do some a rice milk or something and put the turmeric in it and put a lot of black pepper in it at that point and some ginger, make it hot and clearing. So help break up this respiratory condition as well as get the turmeric inside you. But the, really the best way is to be cooking with it. When you make your beans, when you make your lentils, when you cook your rice, put a turmeric in it and, and, and it should be in, in uh, cooked. So you put the oil or the, the ghee or the butter in the bottom of the pan, then you put the spice in you know, with any other seeds like cumin, coriander, mustard seeds until just over a minute for they lightly cook and then you throw in the rice, then you throw in the water and then you cook it or then you throw in the beans and then you throw in the water and then you cook it. So then it, the, the, the properties of the turmeric, uh, cumin come out in the oil because there are a lot of them are these properties that are necessary to be really anti-inflammatory or, or, or oil soluble. So you want to deliver the turmeric to the body in the, in the right vehicle. And this doesn't mean just taking capsules. This is very ineffective. You'd have to take a lot, and I'm sure it doesn't hurt you. But you're going to get a lot better if you uh, results in, in reducing inflammation by just taking this turmeric uh, in uh, oil or a fatty substance, which is why traditionally you have turmeric milk. And that works very good for anybody unless they're a little overweight and have a lot of congestion, then you wouldn't want to do that. But even then, you can do small amounts of milk. But again, the best way is uh, to cook with it. So let's talk a little bit about the diet because there's a lot of misunderstandings about uh, what type of diet is the best when you have pain. Again, you have to understand what kind of pain do you have. You have this dry, cold pain, or you have a hot pain, or you have swelling pain. And of course, a lot of pains in our muscles are contributed to the toxins accumulation in our muscles. A lot of pain in our joints is accumulated to toxins building up in our joints and our system. So these analgesic or pain-reducing methods that we're talking about here are just helping you to reduce the pain and not necessarily getting to the root cause. You have to get in there and uh, clean out these joints, clean out these muscles, clean out the colon, improve liver function, improve kidney function, include, include, improve, I should say, circulation to the whole body. When you have cold hands and feet, the circulation isn't poor. And that's where you're going to start to find the joint pain in the in the extremities, the toes and the fingers, because your circulation is poor, so the body isn't able to uh, get enough nutrients to that area, and it's not able to uh, take care of this uh, parts of the body because your circulation is poor. So you want to improve the circulation a lot of times, really can help with pain and even with uh, uh, headaches. But uh, again, it's a little out of our scope to address the causes, but I want to be very clear that a lot of the cause for uh, chronic fatigue, chronic pain is due to high uh, toxin levels, poor digestion, leading to more toxins. When your digestion is poor, then you, you're actually creating a type of metabolic toxins every day, and it's not uh, exc excreting through the body. If you're, if you're not having a couple bowel movements every day, particularly if you're constipated, this is contributing to your inflammation and the pain because the body is now having a type of autotoxicity where uh, this uh, uh, fecal matter with the toxins, which is meant to be expelled from the body, is being retained, reabsorbed back into the system, pumping through the bloodstream, bogging down the liver, bogging down the kidneys, and you know, and only making it more difficult for the body to uh, re remove the uh, the toxins that are necessary because you're adding to them through your constipation. So it's a lot of prerequisites for removing pain properly and uh, long-term uh, arthritic pain. 
um, and a detoxification of the body, the joints, the muscles, the tissue, the liver, the kidneys, and the lymphatic system. The individual is really the main course of action, and just juicing isn't going to do it. Um, so that's another subject. You can watch my videos on that. But what I want to talk about now is this anti-inflammatory diet. For most cases, if you have chronic joint pain, particularly if you're a warm person, you have that heating, hot pain, you want to avoid the nightshades. That's tomato. Tomato sauce is probably the most inflammatory food. And it's not wheat. If you have an allergic reaction, you can't, uh, you're celiac, maybe wheat's inflaming your colon. Or if you have poor digestion, maybe it's making you bloat. And if you have weak digestion, maybe it's putting on weight, but it's not creating inflammation. Possibly if you're going down to Vons and buying it in a supermarket or something like this of low quality white bread, it could be contributing because of its sugar content. Sugar is going to increase all inflammation. So you want to eliminate all sugar, all sweets uh, from your diet. But it may not be necessary to eliminate wheat. This is a, a, a kind of a separate subject based on your state of your digestion. But you would want to eliminate all uh, tomato sauce. Tomato sauce is clearly inflammatory. Everybody who I've uh, worked with, who's come to me about uh, joint pain, I've asked them to you know, remove these nightshades, tomatoes, uh, green peppers, eggplant, paprika. Uh, you know, most peppers are in that category. Um, and this, uh, people have come back to me and told me that the 20, 30, 40, 50% of their pain was reduced by taking out these tomatoes because their acidic nature. Um, is increasing the inflammation. So it's not just eating the so-called alkaline diet. It, it, it's, it's really, you can't force the body into uh, being alkaline by taking alkaline water. This is not healthy. And it's, I've never even heard very good re long-term results from people doing it. So I wouldn't recommend this as a, a kind of another a fake uh, uh, cure-all. But eliminating the acidic foods such as tomatoes is very, very helpful. Now, if you're, particularly tomato sauce, particularly canned tomatoes, and uh, vinegar as well, in most cases. Now, now we have to break down into the three different types. If you're the type who's warm and hot, and you're already you know, a warm person, you're not a cold person, you're a warm person, and now you have this joint pain. Well, you wanna get rid of anything that's heating. You don't even wanna do a lot of ginger. You definitely don't wanna do a lot of cayenne. You don't wanna be putting cayenne pepper uh, 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 our, our cayenne based oil on your skin even though you read that this helps with inflammation or take cayenne you don't want to because you're already high it's only going to make your pain worse it's for another category of a person than you you have to know what category you're in you, know, you can't just be reading things off of Facebook and, and, and you're just guessing at that point I mean you, you have a chance <laughs> but you, it's better to understand your type of pain which I did cover in the beginning of this webinar um, but if you're the other type and you're cold, then, you know, ginger uh, will be very helpful for you uh, to warm the body up, a little black pepper. And if you're the really heavy type with uh, swelling and uh, 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 kind of overweight and congested, then the pepper, the cayenne are going to be very, very helpful for you. So, um, and, and type of creams and lotions that using the uh, cayenne and, and, and warm will help you. Like this one here, this is uh, this hot plaster, which I mentioned earlier, uh, which is very heating. It comes from, it's like a, a Tiger Bomb patch. Uh, and this Tiger Bomb patch is very hot, very warm. So this is good for the types who are, whose body is not warm in the first place, a Vata type or a Kapha type. So if you're a very warm person, you gotta avoid these heating things and go for more cooling. But most everybody can benefit from getting rid of uh, these nightshades, the tomato. Now, if, like I said, if you're a hot, warm person, you wanna get rid of uh, not ginger, you don't wanna put even garlic, a lot of onions, um, and any hot food, you wanna reduce that down. Any heating, pungent type of food, including peppers, all need to be reduced if you're that type of a person. Um, again, dairy is not an inflammatory unless you're having an inflammatory response to it. Some quality dairy is very poor quality, pasteurized, homogenized dairy that's cold is very hard to digest and often the body has an immune reaction to it and many people are allergic to it and this can create a type of intestinal inflammation. But this is a different subject. Uh, so for most people, except an overweight person or a person who's very, uh, uh, has fatty liver or high congestion, um, in the body, a ghee, butter, 
uh, is going to actually be uh, beneficial to the body. Um, and a person who's very hot in particular well, can do milk, and they should do that turmeric milk. You should have that at night, warm turmeric milk. And fennel if you're hot, little ginger if, if you're a, a colder person. So this turmeric milk is very uh, anti-inflammatory. Um, and other foods that should be uh, considered would be um, any type of processed food, fast food, um, soda pop, sugar. Uh, uh, all of these are, 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 are inflammatory due to, the, due to the sugar, due to the preservatives, due to the processing of the white flour. You know, they have a mild inflammatory uh, condition. So uh, you, you want to avoid those. And, um, and, and for people who are warm by nature to get acid reflux and heartburn, they also want to avoid sour things. So apple cider vinegar, uh, sour fruits, lemon, lime, um, all of these should be avoided if you're a, a pitta or warm type of person with pain. Um, so those would be the, the, the best advice. And, and cooling foods, uh, anti-inflammatory uh, foods are actually um, in Ayurveda very uh, simple. And mostly cooked vegetables, squashes uh, from the gourd family, having melons, uh, uh, cold melons are very cooling for the body, uh, rice and uh, mung beans. For, because that a lot of toxicity uh, problems are due to uh, high levels of, uh, of uh, toxicity and congestion in the body, Often uh, meat, uh, including chicken, and uh, are, is not recommended because of its congestive uh, qualities. And you want, like I said, improving circulation in the body is often a, a big part of, of improving uh, pain in the extremities in particular. And there's, there's many uh, oils you can buy. There's a pitta oil that using herbs to bring down heat. There's what they call vata oil that helps to relax the nervous system and sleep better. And if you're a person who you're not sleeping better and you have a lot of anxiety, then you want to focus on improving your, your, your sleep as well because poor sleep will also uh, contribute to uh, pain. I want to give you a few other little home remedies here. Uh, you can get some, um, I mentioned earlier about oil, you can get some uh, sunflower oil or even eucalyptus. Uh, essential eucalyptus oil and some peppermint oil in it and you can massage that on the body very 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 effective um, and and salt baths one of the best things if you're a warm person you take a cold salt bath if you're a, 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 a kind of a cold person then you can take a hot salt bath salt bath salt baths have been used for maybe thousands of years to reduce uh, inflammation down if you're uh, an overweight person, then even fasting on just juices, which you know we know is popular, these type of juice fasts, but cooling juices, cucumber juice, apple juice, this will bring the body temperature down. Uh, uh, parsley and other diuretics will help the body to lose weight and will benefit you. But fasting only really works to reduce pain for those people who are overweight. Uh, and removing all of the... Uh, uh, if you have a lot of congestion, lymphatic congestion, swelling, swelling in, in, in the fingers, in the ankles, under the lymph glands, then um, you want to reduce down all dairy, all uh, yogurt, all congestive foods that are contributing to uh, edema and uh, swelling. So um, these are the best things that you can do at home. And if you do have type of uh, uh, gouty arthritis or rheumatoid type of arthritis condition. Um, you know, these can give you short-term relief or they can give you uh, a relief for a time being, but you really need to, uh, and not make the condition worse, but you really need to address the causes. And addressing just the pain, uh, unfortunately, is not really addressing the cause. So it's very, very important to understand your cause, what contributed to the pain. Where, where are the block uh, this will uh, help you to uh, understand what needs to be done to help you to recover from this pain, pain long term. But meanwhile, you could be having more turmeric in your diet, avoiding all these nightshades, tomatoes, eggplants, uh, uh, and uh, often 
If you're a warm pitta person, garlic, onions, eating more squash, melons, rice, uh, staying off of meat, chicken, um, uh, and, and pork and beef in particular, having more mung beans, lentils, and eating all at home, avoiding all sugar. There's no reason for anybody to be thinking of reducing pain or taking some type of painkiller if they're having sugar or soda pop or sweets or processed food all day. They need to remove that first, you know, and then fo follow this type of anti-inflammatory diet, which is really a much more healthy diet anyway. And then you can go in and get uh, treatments uh, to detoxify the body and herbal treatments to help to clean the joints out and to help improve your, your condition at a deep level and address the actual cause instead of just uh, 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 pacifying the pain. But I do want to say very clearly that there's many analgesic herbs that reduce pain quite well. So, you know, uh, the problem with these, even like this one, nerve pain, people who have sciatica, then we get uh, oils, that are uh, nerve vines, and we put it on the area where there's the sciatica pain and then take the nerve pain tea all day long. So this can uh, pacify the pain, but you haven't solved the problem of the, the, the sciatica, you haven't got to the cause. But it's often the first step to just pacify the pain. This helps you maybe to reduce down pain medication and of course improve your quality of life. Um, but that, again, like I've said a few times here, is not the cure. But uh, I want to assure you that it's quite possible to reduce down almost any type of pain to a manageable level. If you're drinking the tea all day, taking the herbs all day, and putting the analgesic herbs, Naringi oil is one that's used in Ayurveda. It's very, very effective um, for reducing pain. So there's many oils. Is it to pick the right one for the right person? You don't, if you're a warm person, it has to be a cooling oil with analgesic herbs. If you're a cold person, it has to be a warming oil. So you got to pick the right oil for the right person, the right herbs, the right diet. Um, and then you need to just bring the pain down to a certain point, keep drinking the tea all day long. Um, and then you can control the pain. It's quite a routine but you can control even very high degrees of pain if you follow the diet, take the, put the right oil on the body um, and drink the right teas and take the right herbs all through the day. But then you need to move to the next step and that is get to the uh, root cause and address it and this could take months. Um, but of course, this is much better to remove the remo root cause than just turning the volume down on the uh, alarm system because pain, like I, I, I tell my son, pain is a message to your body that we have a serious problem here and it has to be addressed and you need to stop whatever you're doing and addressing it. So taking pain medication is like turning off the alarm switch. So even here, by just taking analgesic herbs and taking salt baths and having turmeric in your meals and avoiding these anti-inflammatory foods like the nightshades, then you're really just turning down the volume. You won't be able to turn off the volume, but it will come down to what we call manageable level. You can live with it and not have to take pain medication. So that's really the only objective with these herbs is to manage the pain enough that the person can then go through the treatments that are necessary to, to detoxify and clear these bones, improve nutrition, improve digestion, improve elimination, uh, all what is necessary for that particular individual to uh, uh, get to the cause that created uh, the pain, pain in the first place. So I hope that uh, inspired you to address your pain naturally and I hope it also made it very clear that it's not possible all the time to just uh, uh, pick a substance and say this is good for pain. You, you, you have to be careful in choosing what you take. You know, even, and, and supplementation can help to a small degree. I mean, you can take uh, uh, blackstrap molasses when we know it's high in um, magnesium and calcium, and it will help a little bit. You can take magnesium supplements. It will help a little bit. But you're never going to get rid of the pain until you, you, you get an understanding of what the, the cause is where, and what's taking place inside your, your body to cause it. Then you can uh, come up with the proper uh, uh, treatment. So I, I do want you to understand that, uh, that uh, we can manage pain uh, naturally,
but you, you have to um, uh, address the cause and you have to be careful knowing what type of pain you have and uh, to choose what you do. And that's why I hear so many people say, well, I tried something and it didn't work. I tried this and it didn't work. And that's, well, they picked the wrong thing. It wasn't, the problem maybe wasn't the herb or the product. The problem was it wasn't suitable for them. So we're all different and uh, we all need different uh, uh, treatments to address uh, our, our differences, even though to us it may seem like the same uh, uh, condition, pain. So once again, I want to thank you very much uh, for your time. I hope this helped you. This uh, you, video will be available on YouTube. You could watch it there. And if you do need any help in addressing your type of pain, and then of course addressing the causes of your pain, or being uh, uh, supplied with uh, analgesic herbs and teas that are suitable for you, then please contact me. I'd be uh, happy to assist you. But in any case, I do sincerely hope this helped you and uh, gave you some uh, practical ideas of what you can do today to help to brew, bring down your uh, internal inflammation and pain, particularly in your joints and your muscles, which is what we covered today. Thank you very much.